What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode one of Comeback Conversations. We've got a friend of mine here, Dave Verducci. Not only is he a friend, he's part of this comeback. He's helping me lead uh, the charge. He's out taking back territory every day for his own life, for himself, for his wife, for his kids, for his future. But ultimately, he's doing it to help spread the message for me as well, right? Because this thing came and found you. So, Dave, we're going to set the premise. Let me just, this is episode one, right? So, I'm thankful that you got on here on short notice. We had a guy that, uh, that signed up, was in a race to get number one, and then he couldn't make it. So you did. Um, that means a lot to me. That, that tells me that not only does uh, the, your ability to step in and help me out, but what you care about these other people and you care about the, the foundation we're building here and you made yourself available. So I just want to say thanks for that. And then I'm going to set the uh, intentions out of the gate for yourself and for our listeners down the road so they understand what the purpose of this podcast is about. Um, just to be clear, we're going to take this one out to iTunes. Um, we're going to put it out. Actually, it's going to go out on a thing called Anchor, and it's going to spread to all the platforms. So there will be a recorded conversation of what we're doing. There's going to be We're going live into our own community right this second. And then we're going to put it out outside of my, uh, my audience, the people that, that follow me and like me as well. So I want to thank you for getting on here. Just set that. Uh, set the tone so you know who you're dealing with, what you're dealing with. Why don't you give these guys a couple minutes, um, you know, because it's not just the people you're, that you're dealing with right now. It's guys down the road that you don't know, the comebacks you're going to help down the road. Just tell a little bit about who you are, brother. This is just a – I like to call it comeback coffee conversations, but not everybody drinks coffee. So hit it, brother. Right on, man. Mark, thank you. Dude, I, I appreciate you having me here. I appreciate you doing this. I have my coffee. Um, and I'm ready to go, man. I'm fired up. This is, this is exciting. This is an awesome opportunity. Um, so for me, man, I, I started this probably six or eight months or so ago. Um, and dude, where I was at, I, um, I tried different things. I, I tried AA, I, I priced rehab out. Um, and my, my drinking just got worse and worse, you know, night overnight, week over week, year over year. Um, and I was just at a spot where I, I just could not figure out what my solution was, like what my fit was. Um, honestly, I'd watched a bunch of your videos, um, sort of curious, drunk, didn't bother doing anything with it. Um, then one night, man, it just, it just hit me. What do I have to lose at this point? Um, I was in a place where I was starting to feel like I was going to lose it all anyway. Um, so click the link, go for it and see what happens. Um, dude, we had a conversation, you know, our first chat on a, on a Friday night or Friday afternoon. I remember. <laughs> um, and man, I, I ended up, um, it's funny, I think I ended up actually having to talk to my wife first just to make sure it was okay um, to spend that money. And I honestly, I thought she was going to laugh at me because she did not, I didn't think she knew how bad off I was. Um, and she looked me right in the eye and she's like, go for it, dude, you got to do something. Um, and that was just a first little spark of like a little bit of confidence of like, Wow, I had no idea that she knew where I was at. Um, and wow, yeah, if she thinks I need to do something, I know I need to do something. So let's let's fucking do something. Right. Um, and man, we kicked off, and and I'll be honest, man. Um, my first couple of weeks, confused, scared, kind of all those feelings, right? Like, just what did I, what am I doing? Like, this is the first time I'm truly facing um, the idea of me solving this problem. It's something that I always had in the back of my head as something I needed to do. Um, never wanted to take that step, just, just full of fear. Um, I never wanted to give myself really permission to get started on this thing. I just kept kicking the can, man. It was always next Monday. It was always after. Why do you vacation. think that is? Um, I think it's because, I mean, to me, it was always like, you know, it was going to be the greatest fight that I would ever have. Um, and I had built that up in my head as the reality. The reality was this is going to be that, that dark dragon at the end of the, the last level of the video game. And, when I truly am ready to face that and fight that, I think I can do it. But I just kept wanting to push off the idea of having that battle. Um, lots of starts and fits, lots of like, hey, not, you know, let's take a couple of days off and make sure that I actually can do that. And I really couldn't. Um, but I just never wanted to face it. I think I was more afraid of what life without drinking would look like, you know, than I was kind of willing to do anything to, to, to try to see what that looked like. I was just scared to death, man. I didn't know what a for instance, a Friday night looks like without booze. I didn't. I'd spent 20 something years with Friday nights full of drinks, most nights full of drinks. But, you know, the idea of like, how do I watch football without drinking? How do I enjoy it's another blizzard? It's day three of a blizzard here where I live. Right. Um, how do I enjoy a snowstorm without drinks? How do I enjoy anything without drinks? Um, it, it just feared, it, it was so full of fear, man. I was paralyzed with fear. I didn't, I didn't want to take a step to do anything about it because I didn't know what it looked like on the other side. Now that you're on the other side, which, which is great. Thanks for painting that picture of where you were. I mean, I remember because actually um, we were 
I was rolling in my truck and you called or I texted you. I don't think we were able to connect right off the bat. And um, I ended up enrolling you when I was dropping my son off by his, his mom to do a cancer walk. But it was, it was like later in the afternoon or evening at that time. I think it was summertime. So it was like maybe yeah. at seven, eight o'clock. And you're like, yeah, man, I'm, gonna, I'm in, but I'm going out. I'm going to get drunk and I'm going to start. <laughs> I'm going to start to sing on Monday, right? Literally, that's, that's what you true. told me. That's true. <laughs> you know, this goes two ways. Either you're going to do what you did or you're going to say, fuck it, I'm committed right now and I'm, I'm going to move forward. Either way, I want to tell you something. Um, and, and I spoke to you about this at uh, the experience that you came to. Uh, where, you know, we got to spend some time one-on-one is, you know, you are one of the most strong willed, strongest minded comebacks that we have coming through the program, right? Like the certainty that you, that you stood up on the, the found, the, the platform when we were talking at, at O2, you said, what do you want? You said, I want what you have, right? I want that. And I told you what it was. And then to the ability for, for you to come in and sit down at a table and I could tell you were nervous and say, I'm not leaving here without a position in the comeback. Literally, right? You sold me on that. Uh, on that, I'm like, okay, cool. This dude believes in me, believes in him, and believes in this fucking thing. Um, now, not to get all off on track, but I want to want you to understand, and the people out there that are listening to this, if you listen to what Dave said, you listen to the story. The most important thing that you heard was he he was ready, right? Even though you knew the battle was there, you didn't you weren't ready to face it on your own per se. But there was something underlying. There was something irking you underneath there that said, "Hey, like lurking beneath the surface, says, dude, I can't. You can't live like this anymore." And your mindset from the time that we spoke, you were funny, you're the same guy you are now, but you were masking this this confidence and this ability to believe in yourself that you could handle it to who you are now is completely, completely different. So I just want to give you credit on that. Um, I want to go back and talk real quick about the relationship. Um, it was probably in your opinion when you're drunk you thought it was good right but now the relationship with your wife because not to put too much of your personal information in, but you shared a, a testimonial a little bit from her with me right she was not happy that's to that, put it lightly that puts it lightly no that puts it lightly brother. um no man so you know it's just like everything else when when we're lying to ourselves we're lying to people around us we want to believe our own shit we want to believe everything's going pretty well. Um, and she, you know, one of the, I don't know, interesting parts, I guess, is, is a couple of weeks into this, she still had a lot of doubt. Um, you know, and to some of the, the points earlier throughout some of the, some of the guys have shared this in the, in the program, um, we changed so fast. You know, one week is like a month to us. Two weeks is like two months. Um, so where I was at, you know, a couple of weeks in, I had truly started to change my life, um, change my patterns, change my behaviors. Um, and to her, you know, it's like, yeah, we, it's just another couple of weeks of him trying to be good, you know, after one of his big fuck ups. Um, you know, there's one of uh, quite a few, but you know, one that I always remember is at Disney World. We were in Disney on vacation and you know, I went out for a drink or something at like nine o'clock. You come back at like three thirty or so in the morning. Um, following day, you know, we're all up, we're going to go to the parks and stuff at seven in the morning. Felt like shit all day. And to me, that was like I'd gotten through the day. It was almost a success that I'd gotten I'd managed to on like three or four hours of sleep with a hangover, get up and go to the parks. Her memory of that experience was totally different. Um, she remembers me smelling like bourbon all day while at the park. She remembers me not being present, being physically present, but not mentally fucking around, really. I just, I just went through the motions that day. Um, and she remembers that stuff. She holds on to that. So it took more than two weeks of, you know, me being on good behavior, you know, so to speak, for her to, to start realizing this is, this is real. This change is happening. Um, you know, and then it's the fear on the other side of that. It's like, how long is this going to last until, you know, whatever he goes back to his other stuff. Um, and it really took weeks and weeks, months and months of just doing the reps. But at one point, a couple of weeks in, you know, she started seeing, you know, these changes and she, she started sharing stuff with me that she had never shared. Um, initially, I would have been, you know, kind of like combative, I guess, if she was kind of coming at me with some of the stuff. Um, and I, I wasn't, I just kind of listened and was really starting to absorb, like, yeah, I've done some damage, man. Like I have not been who I needed to be for her, for myself, for my kids. And I had to just accept sort of hearing that and then really begin to build, rebuild this kind of relationship. Um, but you know, she said, I never told you this stuff because I knew you weren't listening. Like you weren't really in the place or in the mental space to listen to the stuff that I have to say about you and about us. 
Um, but man, as soon as I started getting it going, she was she was feeling real good about sharing that stuff, which was good. Um, really, yeah, tough she was to excited to tell you how much of a piece of shit she was. She had a list of stuff, dude. Now she um she was, dude, because she's she's committed, man. She's stuck with me. She's been with me. You know, we've been together fifteen or so years at this point. Uh, she's been riding with me for all this stuff, all the good, all the bad. Um, so she's, you know, she wanted to to communicate. She wanted to get back with, you know, us figure ourselves out. But she kept a lot of that stuff to herself because she knew I wasn't listening. Right. Talk a little bit, a little bit about it now, though. Right. I mean, it's a different story. And actually, Dude, before we move on to that, there's the other uh, relationship with the kid. Right. Well, so yeah. So um, I mean, with my wife, it's I mean, it's totally different. Like we are, you know, it, there was a lot of stuff in the first couple of months of me trying to find who I was and, and get back to you know do my comeback, really figure out my life, what I want, what my goals are. Um, and then she started changing herself, man. The first couple of weeks you know, it was a little awkward, right? She doesn't know, hey, can I drink around you? Like that kind of thing. Right. Um, like, yeah, drink, do whatever you want around me. Like I'm kind of on my path. Um, but it's like two, you know, it's like trees growing, man. You either grow together and grow separate. And we got to a point where it was just like communicate. Um, you know, I, I came out and I told, I was probably, I wouldn't say too honest, but I went back to a bunch of shit and shared stories she had never heard before. And she's like, all right, at a certain point, she's like, all right, that's, that's good. Like, let all that, let's, let's talk about the future. Let's talk about where we're going. Um, then we started kind of just goal setting together um, and really building, like, you know, almost starting a new, like, let's build, what do we want? What do I, you know, it's, it's for a while. It's about what do I want? What is my next 30, 60, 90 years? Look like my right. six months, my year. And then it becomes, what is our one year plan? Where are we in five years? Um, and so this change in my mindset and this kind of upgrade in my life has really rippled to her. Like she, you know, what we've always taken for granted, like we both have corporate America jobs and she's, we both sort of always said, well, we'll just be doing this for 20 years and then we can retire. She's changed her mindset, man. She's like started putting applications out to different places. She's like, I don't have to just do this for 20 years. If I can imagine a different world, like I can make that different world happen. And that's where she's at now. And that's, I mean, that's really a good thing to come back to change myself and then change all those around me. So in a way, the comeback has ultimately changed her life as, as well too, even though she didn't go through the program, but the beliefs, let's be honest, we, without giving away too much to the guys out there, they're going to hear it down the road, but you know, we, we live our life by the, the core values, right? Faith, finances, family, fitness, future, freedom, foundation. It's a, it's a pretty, pretty simple process without overcomplicating things. We show you how to track, measure, win each day, stack victories and, and continue to power through. She, look, it sounds to me like she was able to gravitate from our, our core values, things from you, take it for herself and put them into the future, which was my next question for you, right? What does the future look like for you guys? Like, do you have a, do you have a plan? Do you know what you want to do? Like, where, where are you going to be, Dave? And Mark, it evolves on a daily basis, brother. And, that, and awesome. that's, probably the, that's probably the biggest thing is, is, so we did know what our future was six or eight months ago. Like our future was, I mean, for me, I, honestly, dude, I was at a spot where I, I didn't know how much longer I was going to live. I was pretty convinced I was going to drink myself to death in like a hotel room somewhere on a work trip. Not proud of that, but that's the fact. Um, and her, she was pretty convinced that she was going to end up raising two little kids on her own um, and needing to figure out how, to, how in the world to do that. Um, and so beyond that, one step beyond that, the future was, all right, we'll just kind of suck it up in these sort of boring average corporate jobs, pretty good jobs. Um, but we'll just go through these motions for the next 20 years or so, retire, and who knows what happens after that. Um, and now it's like, dude, why don't we try to, why, why don't we live in Florida? Why don't we start our own stuff? Why don't we, why don't we go all in on, on this comeback? Like, what can we do on this comeback in this movement to help change the world around us? Um, what can we do? Like, there's no limitations. Can we build a house? And, and we are just talking last night because it's snowing again. Um, why don't we live in San Diego? That's a beautiful place. I've seen it, never been there. It looks nice. Why don't we live beautiful. there? Um, we can work from anywhere. We can do anything that we want. We can do anything that we put our minds to. The work is out there. We know how to, we're both, you know, high achievers. We know how to make money. There's no limits as to why I need to live in this place, in the Northeast, under a snowstorm, and go into my kind of average corporate America job and the same with her. Um, now we don't know where we're going to be in six months, which is good. <laughs> it's a different feeling, man. It's all positive and it's all exciting. Like, we can be wherever we want to be in six months, a year, two years. Let's shift gears a little bit on to uh, back to the program per se. Talk about the brotherhood. 
Okay. Um, this is a piece that people don't know when they're coming through. Think about it back to your journey. You come through Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or however you end up inside of our world of the comeback, whether it's a picture of me or whatever it gets you there. Um, you don't get to see what's on the other side and we keep it that way because the way I like to put it is, you know, we, we are the black card of, of recovery, right? We're not for everybody. This is a, this is a, we have a rule that says, I don't want money from pussies. I don't want to work with people who don't have the ability, who can't make decisions, who don't want or can't see exactly what you and your wife want. So um, not, you didn't know that on the other side when you were getting into this journey with us, right? Um, so talk about what it's, you've been able to see it kind of unfold, right? From, from when you came to where I was at to where we're at right now, it's a completely different movement, right? It's, it's gaining momentum every day. But I, I feel that the piece that makes it stronger, these other guys, the support, right? Hope, belief, community. We supply everything that you need. If you can't do it on your own, we'll do it with you and for you sometimes to help get you where you need to be, understanding you don't have a disease. And, and that's kind of the mindset we have back here. But talk a little bit about what it's meant to yourself. Just I'm sure you've had dark days, right? We, we all do. I talk about them all the time. Maybe not as bad as they were, but there's still things that maybe, you know, you had to rely on some of these guys. So fill, fill me in on what your thoughts are about that part of this. These other dudes like you out there, your friends from the internet. Yeah, my 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 guys I met on the internet. Um, no, I mean right on. That's probably one of the strongest pieces, really. So, this is a group of guys who are separated by you know distance throughout the country, throughout the world. Um, these are guys at different places in their lives. Um, you know, kids, families, wives. Some of that, none of that, all that stuff. Uh, one common bond is this habit dysfunction bullshit that we all kind of deal with. It, it slows us down. It depresses us. It holds us back. Um, it's a bag of fucking luggage that we carry around with us in everything that we do. That's our common bond. Um, other, otherwise, we all believe in the same shit. Like, we all want to get better. Um, every single man in this group, every guy in this program has the single-minded belief of, I will get fucking better. Sorry about the swearing. All I right. Can, sorry. Hopefully, you can cut that out. I will bleep that out. I get passionate, brother. Um, every single one of us knows that we can be better. And every single one of us has our almost an internal duty to like help the other get better. Um, and I think that helps us get better. Um, I know, you know, it was day, day two or three for me really early on. Um, a fellow by the name of Alex reached out to me on messenger. I didn't know him. He didn't know me. I am brand new to the program. He just says, Hey man, how's it going? Wanted to say hi. And I'm like, who is this dude? Like, um, and I had seen some of the archives. I'd seen this guy in some of these videos one of the most positive, like just let's go kind of fellows you'd ever meet. Um, didn't know him, perfect stranger, didn't need him, didn't know, you know, I knew he was part of this thing. I didn't know in what way or, or how he could help. Just the fact that a dude that doesn't know me wanted to check in and say, how you doing? It was a Sunday. I think I had a on a Friday. Just wanted to say, what's up, man? See how you were doing. And I was sitting in the church, actually. I shouldn't have been playing with my phone, but I was. Um, just sitting in church thinking like, wow, this has been a crazy couple of days. And I didn't feel good. Um, I was scared. I was probably still hungover. Um, and he texted me, hey, man, just wanted to say hi, see how you were doing. That kind of like common bond and that feeling of like, you know, this dude just cares just because he cares about this thing. Um, and that ripples to everybody, man. Every single one of us in this group um, are really here to help one another. Uh, I think, you know, I think helping others helps me. I think for me, being able to tell my story, even in a you know, on a podcast like this, just being able to talk about what I've been through, where I've come, where I'm trying to go. Um, I think that helps me every day to be able to get the message out. And it also helps me to, to just really continue to crystallize like where I have come from and like where I'm at. Um, but this brotherhood, man, this thing is like, this is a collection of really elite guys that are all pulling in the same direction. Uh, no one will let anyone fall through the cracks. You got to do the work. You got to put the time in. But there is always a guy, you know, anytime somebody puts something out on that, on that Facebook group, at least five or six guys were out their phone number. Hey man, I've been through that dude. Let's talk. Um, that kind of bond, that kind of truly is a brotherhood, man. You don't find that anywhere else. Um, and it's all this collection of guys that are pulling in the same direction. It's beautiful. Talk about choice. Um, you and I, you know that I don't believe it's a disease. Um, and I don't believe that you do. I don't think anyone back here does. I mean, it just doesn't, it can it turn into one. Absolutely. Right. I mean, you can, you can get cirrhosis of the liver. You can do, it can evolve into shit, right? It really can. But at the end of the day, you started just like I started by picking up a bottle or whatever. I didn't walk outside and slip and trip and fucking grab a drink. Um, 
but talk about the choice of that actual and the choice of what would happen if you decided to go back, right? And I'm just spinning, spinning the tables here, right? If you decided, you know what, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back and live that life. Would you be okay with that? Well, so, I mean, it, you know, it really is, everything's about choice, right? Like, you know, from when you get up in the morning, do you brush your teeth before you go for your morning cardio? I, it's a choice, right? Everything's a choice. This choice is no different. Um, I tell guys when I talk to them, um, I love lobster, right? And so when I have lobster, I don't go on like a five-day lobster bend, right? Where I'm like, you know, I can't stop eating lobster. I won't go one lobster to the next. Like I eat lobster and then I move on with my life. Um, that's the kind of healthy, if there is one sort of idea that you should have with, with drinking. If you drink where it fits, that's cool if that's your choice. Um, but the bigger choice really is that you make, you know, you make the decision to, to do something with your life. Like, so depending on where you're at, if you know it's not where you want to be, you have to make a choice to make a change. Um, and then you have to keep making those choices every single day. Um, stuff's going to come up, right? There's always curveballs. There's always crap that comes our way. It's how you handle it, how you choose to handle it, how you, what kind of power you put on, you know, someone else's crap that they're giving you. Like, is that crap really that important? If you think it is, it is. If you choose that it's not important, then it isn't. Right. Um, everything comes down to choice, man. Um, for guys that are in doubt as to whether they, they want to jump in on this kind of thing, you know yourself whether you need some kind of support or help. Um, we spend a lot of time lying to ourselves. We all do. Um, it's time to stop with that lying and it's time to make a choice. Like if you think you need something, you actually don't think you need something. You know, you need something. Right. You got to do it. You got to choose to make it, make a change. Like it's, you're never going to wake up all set. Like I, I used to always think like, yeah, someday this shit will just kind of go away or maybe it'll fix itself. Nothing fixes itself. You have to grab it. You have to make a choice to change it. And then every single day you have to take the steps to change it. It's all about choice, brother. I love that, man. I don't need to, I don't need to say anything on that. I'll just leave it be just like that. Um, the movement, this brotherhood, this comeback thing that you're part of, um, for, for those of you guys listening, Dave uh, is part of the enrollment team that I have here, right? What he does is he helps people. Uh, first and foremost, he's a comeback through and through. Second, uh, he's part of the enrollment team, which he had came through the council to the experience and to the alliance. And he came through the process. And now he actually works on board with us, helping spread this message along with you heard it working a corporate uh, America job as well, plus his wife working one. So uh, he believed in this thing so much that he wanted to go through the whole process through this journey with us to become part of it, which we make available for other people, you know, as this thing goes, which I want to talk about the movement. This is something for me personally, right? I'm going to get a little selfish here. Where do you see this thing rolling in the next three, five, 10? Where do you see this comeback going? Like, well, what's it, what's it mean to you? What do you, what do you see? So Mark, that that's funny. So, I mean, my entire life, so I, I just turned 40 a couple of weeks ago, my entire life, um, I've always had this sense that, that I should help people, that I want to help people. Um, and I've tried to help people in every kind of capacity that I've ever been in, between corporate America, you know, everything from being a Boy Scout when I was a teenager, um, every single thing I've ever tried to do, I've always tried to help people where I could, where, I, where the opportunity presented itself. Um, to me, this is just that whole thing on an entirely different level. Um, I feel like every choice, every crap choice, every good choice, um, everything that I've had to stick it out through, you know, crap jobs growing up, um, you know, life handed me lemons kind of things all throughout my life has given me all the tools that I need and helped me be in the exact right spot that I am today to be able to be a part of this thing, not just for a little while or not just for six months or a year. I really, I truly believe this thing is the cause of my life, dude. I believe that everything that I've been through in my entire life has positioned me to be where I am today and be part of this thing for the rest of my life. Um, I am 100% committed to, to working on this thing and taking it bigger, bigger, and bigger. Um, and I just know there's a, a need for it. Every single guy I know that's not within the comeback, everybody in sort of my regular life could use this. Um, they are not ready. Someday I hope they will be, and I will be there, and I know the comeback will be there for them when they are. Um, but this thing, this, this habit, dysfunction, drinking crap that, that's going on in the world, that problem continues to grow. And I, I think the need for us and the comeback and this being the solution that it is for guys like us, mm -hmm. that needs to grow. Um, I, can't be, I couldn't be more excited to be a part of it and, and to help take this thing. I can't, I can't imagine where it's going to go, to be honest with you. Um, I have ideas. I have thoughts. You know that. Um, 
but just to see the way this thing has grown in, in eight months or so, however long I've been a part of it, um, just to see what it could look like a year from now, I, I can't imagine it. I, I mean, to be honest with you, I see offices, I see locations, I see all kinds of stuff all throughout the world. This is, this is not just an American problem. This is a problem throughout the world, um, but it is a big time problem in America. And I think, we, I think this is a solution that fits for the right guy. I think there's a lot of the right guy out there. I agree. Um, we just don't necessarily, we're not ready to take that, take that next step. We just, we're scared, man. We're fearful. Um, I was, you were, we're scared. We don't know what the other side looks like. If we can connect what that other side does look like. Um, and I think, you know, people get to a place where, you know, the thing is growing around them. They're seeing, they're seeing these t-shirts. They're hearing guys who changed their lives, guys who were in that pit and have now climbed out. You start seeing that, you start hearing that it's a groundswell, man. It just builds, it grows. Um, it's organic. You really just start pouring gas on that growth. It's a wildfire that you sort of control a little bit, but let that thing burn, man. That, this is the word that needs to be spread. I agree. Works. We, we, last night, Kendra and I, we laid down, I was talking, and I go, I sit down, I start thinking about the movement and the numbers and the men and, and the numbers of the amount of lives. And then I start looking at studies and there's like two and a half million cases of, of, alcohol, I guess, whatever, abuse every year support, like reported new cases. And that just compiles and compiles and compiles. And, and sometimes it gets overwhelming from my standpoint, because I'm like, man, how am I going to solve this? Number one, it's not for me to solve. It's for those men to solve. And it's for me to spread the message to get it to as many people as I can. And I don't know that it's ever going to, to actually completely be solved because I think it's just, I think the problem, you know, there's so much depression and anxiety and fear and business stress and divorce and, and the world gives all these external things. Um, the people start using the, the solution of alcohol to mask those problems. And there's going to be a constant evolution. So, so when I look at the comeback, I got to figure out how to get it massive and louder and louder and louder. But from my own standpoint, sometimes it's overwhelming, right? Even if I only... I remain grateful for the, the hundreds we're creeping up on, you know, we'll be over a thousand men's lives changed this, this year. Um, probably get to a couple thousand this year. Um, but that's nothing compared to what is really out there. And that scares me sometimes, you know? Um, and I don't yeah. share that with a lot of people. Well, but so, you know, it's, it's the hundreds, it's the thousands, but you know, I think what we have to always remember is, is though that life changed that man, that, that my life changed that changed my kids, my two kids, that changed my wife. Um, that's going to ripple to everyone that I work with, you know, in my, on my day to day people in my town, the guy I coach T-ball with who doesn't see me hung over on Saturday, the next T-ball season. And I get to tell him why, um, that, that affects, you know, really it's, it's that butterfly effect or that ripple thing of, of throwing the stone in the pond and then the ripples coming out. Um, you know, you change in the kind of guys that we work with, we're, we're all leaders. We're all guys that touch a lot of other lives. Right. Um, that, that butterfly effect, man, has a very long ripple. Um, you know, it's changing, you know, you're changing the, the one guy, but it's this ripple, man. And that, that's what, that's, what's powerful to me. You know, you're, you're, it's the one guy, but it's that guy has a team of 15 people that work for him who are all going through something like this and just don't know how to get help right. or, or know that it even exists. Um, and it's the ripple effect, but I hear you, man, we got to get louder. How do we get louder? 2020 is about getting loud. I know you, you're in, you're in <laughs> Come back you're, podcast. My, my internal messages. So you get, you got insight into what, uh, what you, what I see for 2020, what we're trying to do. But, you know, obviously this thing is, uh, this is going to be a problem that, that the world's faced with every single day. Um, and it's just something that I feel fortunate enough to be able to, uh, to, to one day stand up and say, you know what, my life sucks. I lost my kid. I lost everything. It's time for me to put my shit together and become the man that I physically see and mentally see or didn't physically see, but I mentally saw inside of my mind. Um, but I couldn't see in the mirror. So I'm just, I'm grateful to be able to be here with you on this call. Um, we're going to let you get off here in a couple minutes. What I want you to do is just give them, you like to get passionate, man. So go ahead and just talk to that guy out there that needs to hear it. Um, you know, talk to yourself the day that you called and told me you're going out and getting drunk with your wife. I mean, the state of mind that you were in at that moment, give those guys some advice, like, you know, or just some positivity and maybe they don't want your advice, but tell them something that you think they need to hear. I mean, I'd say this Mark, it's, it's dark. Um, there's a darkness, there's a guilt, there's a shame. There's a, a bunch of stuff you're hiding, you're, you're keeping within you. Um, you don't know what the other side looks like. 
um, it's fear, man. It's, it's being scared. It's, it's that little fire of hope that you have inside you. Every single one of us has it. It's this tiny little fire and it, it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Um, and as long as you still have that tiny, that glimmer, right? That tiny little spark, talk to someone in the comeback, talk to somebody who can help you. If it's not the comeback, I hope it's the comeback. If it's not, that's okay. Give somebody a call, talk to somebody, get fucking help. You can change your life if you believe that you can change your life. And there's no reason you shouldn't believe it. The comeback takes that little, that little, little flame, that little bit of hope and just pours gasoline on it. Just constant gasoline. Um, the guys that are around you want, want to see you do better. Do better. Um, you know you can do better. You know you want to do better. You got to make the choice, dude. You got to make a change. It's never going to happen on its own. You've got to, you've got to say, yes, I want to do this. You've got to face your shit square in the eye, address it and then go for it, man. You got to dig in and go for it. It's the only way anything's going to ever happen. Um, if you sit back and wait for yourself to wake up and feel better or feel different, it will never happen. Um, you must do something to make it happen. You've got to punch through the wall got to kick a door down whatever you have to do you got to do something to make it happen it will not just happen um i think for a lot of guys in our kind of group here um in our situation the comeback is that way if it's not for everybody that's okay um but you got to do something you cannot just sit there and watch your life go by life can be very beautiful and have a lot of great things in it um and, and you're sitting on the sidelines man you're missing out on it like it's time to get in there roll up your sleeves and go enjoy life um, it can be very enjoyable without drinking. It's a lot more enjoyable, in fact, without drinking and sedating and all this crap that we're doing. Um, so go for it, man. Right on. So what I want to finish up with is um, I'm going to piggyback off exactly what you said. We have to come back. Do not care how it gets done, but we care that it gets done. Yes, I would like people to come through and do it our way. But at the end of the day, like I said, there's two and a half million. There's millions and millions and millions of people out there. There is AA. There is NA. There's celebrate recovery. There's, there's uh, all different forms of, of things out there for people. If our way is not the way for you, just please do something. You know, I, I get a lot of backlash and people sending me bad messages and death threats and stuff out there. And I welcome them because they tell them they're hurting, right? They think the only way to do something is through AA. Well, the difference between us and them is that we don't judge. All we want is for these people to be able to figure out how to get their lives back, lead their children, lead their wives, change their communities, build their businesses, and be the men that they want to be. So um, at the end of the day, brother, I'm proud of you for making that step. I'm grateful to have you on my team now and to be part of, uh, part of this movement, part of this brotherhood. And I just look forward to seeing what the future brings for you for your family, for myself, for all of us. So let's fucking do this, man. Let's have a, let's have an amazing 2020. It's what December 3rd, 4th. I don't even know what today is, but uh, let's finish up this year strong, move into 2020 and change some lives, man. I love it, man. Let's do it, Mark. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate you. I'm so grateful for this. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for all your struggles. I'm grateful for my struggles. Uh, I appreciate you, dude. Thank you. Awesome. Well, have a good day, brother. We'll talk to you soon. You too, man. Take care.